started to start to feel more and more like a vanity project because it's kind of like, hey, say something nice about my script and I'll say something nice about yours, you know? And um, but we actually kind of like got tired of that and split it off and wanted to create our own ethos, like our own group. And we figured, well, what does writers really need is support. They really need somebody to just kind of like, you know, help them, you know. Um, make their scripts better. And so the initiative began that way. And so along with that is that one of our producers, Matt Shield, had said, hey look, we know directors, we know writers, we know actors. Why don't we just film some of these scripts, man? There's some great scripts coming through here. And you know, I just said, it's so simple, why not? You know, and that's how uh, the 0151 was birthed. You know, over the summer, we kind of like put out the feelers for everyone to say, hey look, we're gonna make films, you know, in the fall, and who wants to be involved? And we need writers, directors, actors, editors, makeup, you know, and all of those people started to come into the same room. Now that was magic. But either way, is eventually, we had concepts for like about 20 films. What we wanted to do was, is that not just showcase all of these films in Liverpool, that's been done. We felt that, let's tour it around, you know, let's take it over to Northwest. So. Uh, we went to Manchester at the Kano Shirts and uh, we went over to the Wirral and we actually got the light cinema, thanks to uh, Gary Preo. And we showcased the film in the cinema. Now, if you're an actor, if you're a writer, or even a director, what you want is to go see your film on the big screen, that's what we're all doing it for. And, you know, and so people came out to that. And so now, here we are at Camp and Furnace. And our home base, Liverpool, and we're kind of like going, oh, well, this is nice. And we had a really good crowd. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the crowd that we got today. I mean, we did a lot of pushing. I mean, it was a great team effort to get people in uh, to see the 13. <laughs> um, as far as like me and the films, I mean, pretty much, you know, uh, I worked on, on a lot of the films, uh, but I wrote uh, Two, two films. I wrote, yeah, I wrote two films, uh, which was Orbit and Road Film. And uh, as I said at the panel, you know, Orbit was because I'm working on a screenplay. I've been trying to sell for ages. And that's usually the story of all writers. But um, I wanted to do a film about black fatherhood, you know, something very important to me. And I can't raise any money. So then I was like thinking, okay, well, what do I do? So I came up with this concept of prologues because I, what I did was I had like seven, you know, seven black men going on a holiday, you know, while one guy is waiting for the results of his wife's uh, pregnancy test. And they decide to use this as a pilgrimage to go find his dad who left him when he was a kid. Who doesn't know that story? And so what happened was the character of the stepdad started to really resonate with me. And it resonated so much that I wanted to make that the first prologue, and that's how Orbit was born. And, um, you know, and the film that we actually see, uh, I, I, you know, I got a lot of stick around. It's a little, well, I got some stick, not a lot. Uh, people enjoy the film, but, you know, people were looking at it as like that scene where the father and son are interfaced with each other. And they were kind of like saying, well, why is that? You know, and, um, is that an accident? You know, and I'm like, no, it's a director's choice. And see, that's what I like about the MSI films. All the films are different. They're dramatic, they're funny, they're um, horrific, but the styles are all different. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to have them be interfaced with one another in the same space, but not at the same time. And the only way to do that was to um, map them on top of each other. So yes, you could go and say, hey man, I could see that. Why is that happening? I'm like, dude, you know? <laughs> Trying to show that they can't connect. They live in the same house, but they can't connect because they lose the mom. And I thought that was really important. I mean, you know, uh, having stepchildren, and thankfully my wife is alive, but I'm just trying to say that that would be one of those kind of scenarios, and that's how our was born. As far as Roadfield, as I said out there, you know, Roadfield was another story because I wanted to actually direct Roadfield, but I figured I had to give it up to other people, and so I had another director come in. And um, what I wanted to do was, if you're stuck on the side of the road and you got this guy just rabbiting on, you know, I could have had, you know, the driver kill the other guy. <laughs> no kill murder, very easy. 
But then I thought, oh, wait a minute, what if their imagination was so big that they actually created the killer? You know, so when the girl says cutlass, you go, what? <laughs> what is that all about, a cutlass? And then what happens? The guy gets killed by a cutlass. What happened? I think that's great. <laughs> Um, as far as directing, you know, I mean, I directed a couple of films, and uh, this was also a really good opportunity because I guess people, you know, like, you know, they trusted in the vision, you know, and I wanted to work on other people's scripts. I spent a lot of time making my own short films, and that's not really a good test, I think, for whether or not you can make a film. You know, because anybody could write a script and make their own film. You know, the real test is, can you make a film and satisfy the writer of that film? And, uh, you know, can you make a film that actually resonates with someone else? Because we know what we're trying to say. As a director, writer-director, so to speak, we know what we're trying to say. But what we really need to test our skill as a director is to direct someone else's script. Um, you know, the writers I worked with on the projects that I did, you know, were all very amenable. You know, I did Boom, which was when Blow Up St. George's Hall. Everybody really loved that one. I don't know why. <laughs> Blowing up St. George's Hall, that's kind of bad, you know? But, um, yeah, no, I liked it too. Um, then I did uh, Horoscope uh, for Carl Mann, which I really liked doing, but it was one of those that really tested the boundaries for me. You know, um, because I'm such a scaredy cat, I really, you know, I always wanted to make a horror film. So, having the opportunity, you know, we had problems because it was so, we had only like a day, really, um, to shoot this film, which shouldn't have happened in a day. Um, but that's how our schedule ended up. And, uh, you know, that scene where he's driving the car and he sees the girl in the back. Freaks me out every time. It's like from Twilight Zone. So I can't uh, have nightmares. <laughs> fuck! 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 Uh, it's a proof of fact that nine out of ten drivers find it difficult to drive with no fingers. The one that doesn't find it difficult to drive is because, well, we've already killed. Sorry, man. <laughs> you know. So to me, it was finding the right sound, and I liked it how somebody asked that question about music because horoscopes score is really important because finding the right sound to really evoke the fear was really um, the, was the great exciting part of the editing process. Um, so hopefully that works for people, you know. Um, but then speaking about, you know, um, last thing I'll say in the directing process is Shadows in the Stream and Final Course. Those two films were fantastic for me because, you know, I love both of the writers of those films, but I was able to actually test out um, reaction shots. You know, what I, you know, my pet peeve about student filmmakers is, is that they tend to shoot master shots. They tend to kind of like get the equipment from school, put the camera on a tripod and shoot something, two-hander, three-hander, whatever, and they think that's filmmaking. And what they also tend to do is, some of them, especially when they're their writers, tend to follow the script religiously. And what it is, is, is that they don't realize that the true direction is in the reaction shot. That's where it is. And that means that the director and the editor have to be married together. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, in this case, I was the editor, so I was married to myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, to be able to have somebody say something and have that reaction shot. You know, it's what I call like coverage. You always have. So I hate you know, you guys that they, they come in with a storyboard, <laughs> one shot, like, yeah, we're gonna do this. <laughs> Rip it up! <laughs> you know, because pictures don't move. You need to actually organically work with the actors in the space. That's how it works. And, you know, we did that. So with Final Course, especially, like, what you see is you see a lot of eye movement. You know, people looking at each other. And um, unfortunately, like today, I didn't put the score on it yet. But when I add the score, it's going to be very powerful. Uh, Lastly, Shadows was about the emotion. So these are kind of like my, my things about directing, I guess. But Shadows in the Stream was such a powerful piece in two pages where a woman is a child because her mom has dementia. And she buys her mother an ice cream because she's hoping that her mother can kind of like regress back to a point where she can remember that she loves her. And when their hands touch, 
and the ice cream drips and she hears the mom say I love you I did that on purpose because a woman with dementia you can't just say hey ice cream that's a magic trick <laughs> that director said give your mom some ice cream and she'll say I love you so what I wanted to leave it open was is that she heard it because she wanted to so bad you know and um, so did the mother say I love you and I think that's where real direction comes in you know um, because if you can talk about it you know then then that's how you know you made a film so you know that's me you know I mean everybody else can talk about their own process but that's for me is about reaction shots emotional impact and music that's what my uh, contribution to the MSI was so I'd like to thank everybody for taking part in all of that and uh, you know hopefully midnight you know we, we, we launch Friday the 13th okay so anyway can I end it that way can I end it that way <laughs>